Hey yo, what's up my little coders? In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to send a GET request in Java and how to convert the response from this request to the plain Java object so that you will be able to manipulate this response easily in your code. However, before jumping straight to the code, let me just start with a super quick recap of the theory. Okay, so what is a GET request? A GET request is one of the HTTP methods and HTTP itself stands for the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It was designed to enable the communications between clients and servers. HTTP works as a request response protocol, and in case with a GET request, it is used to request data from a specified resource. Very often, the GET request endpoint would accept the query strings or pass params, which can be used to request something particular from the API. Let's look at the real API now to explore it in a bit more details. On my screen you can see now an example of a GET request response coming from the REST countries API. This API basically allows us to fetch some information about different countries. You can see that as part of this GET request URL we specify that we are interested in Germany and it returns the information to us about Germany. For example, it has data like what are the currencies in Germany, what is the capital of Germany, in which region Germany is located, and so on. If, for example, you would be interested not in Germany but, let's say, in Italy, you can just provide a different country in this URL and the API would return to us the information about Italy instead of Germany. But, what if instead of getting this response in a browser, you would like to get this response in our Java code? And what if you would want to convert this JSON response to a plain Java object, or maybe just part of this response? How can we do that? First of all, let's create a URL object, and URL object is basically a reference or an address to a resource on the network. Here we need to pass the URL of our GET request. We need to import the class and also add an exception to a method signature. Now, using this URL object, we can try to establish the HTTPS URL connection so that we can connect to this API. We need to add another exception to a method signature and we need to cast it as well. Also, we want to specify what kind of request method will this connection have. And as you remember, it might be a GET request, but it also might be a POST, DELETE, PUT, or something else. So, let's be precise. Now think about it. When you send a request, how can you validate that your request has been sent successfully and there have been no problems with your request and you are able to get a valid response? How can you do that? You can identify it with a status code which API would return to you when you send a request. For that, let's just simply create an integer, let's call it a response code, and let's get it from a connection. Now, let me explain you what it all means in a bit more details. For this API, if I would open a network tab to see what kind of calls are executed when we hit this URL in the browser, here we can see just one call, because this is what we expect, as it's just a single GET request. But in the network tab, we can also see what kind of status code does this API return to us. Here we can see 200, meaning that everything is fine. We even get this green circle here. But if you would provide an invalid country and would try to do the same, now you can see that we get a status code of 404, meaning that it hasn't been found because it just simply doesn't exist, which makes sense, right? Because this is invalid country name. Let's handle these situations in our code. Most usually, as per standard, the valid response code would be captured as 200. However, it would not mean that invalid response code would be equal to 404 all the time. There are different status codes for different errors. For example, you can get 500 when the full API is down. Also, someone may implement some custom codes, but most usually, if the request succeeded, it would be 200. This is the standard, basically. Let's use a constant from the HTTPS URL connection. Here we can see some other possible codes for different scenarios. But okay, if it's 200, we know that everything is good, else something went wrong. And if something went wrong, let's just print an error message in this case. 
And let's also print the code which we get as well. All right, if I will run it right now, let's see whether we can connect to an API. Yes, we get 200 and we don't print the error message, meaning that all is fine in our case, which is good. And if everything is fine, we can try to progress with our code logic. So how can we basically get the response which API returns to us? For that, let's store it as a string builder, or it can be replaced by the string, but in this case, it would not be the most efficient solution. Let me explain you why. Because after that, we would use the scanner to basically read this data from the input stream. And after that, we will go inside the while loop. And now, if you don't know why inside the while loop the string builder will be more efficient, uh, you can check out one of the videos on my channel in which I explain you why a string builder will be much more efficient than the normal string inside the while or for loop. I will attach a link in the description below in case if you're interested, guys. But okay, for each line, we can just append it to our string builder. And basically, after that, we can just try to print the string which we got. If I rerun my code right now, yep. You can see here that we get our response as a string, and this is exactly the same response as here. You just get it as a string. But, okay, string might be nice, uh, but still, you know, string would not help us to basically manipulate this data. What if we want to convert this uh, string to a normal Java object? How can we do that? For that, we can try to leverage something what is called the object mapper but you can see now that my IntelliJ cannot recognize this object mapper class this is because it's coming from the external library and we need to import it in order to be able to use it it just comes from the faster xml.jackson it's a very useful library uh, make sure you you know read about it yourself as well in your free time uh, but yeah we need to import it as part of our grade of dependencies or if you would say use maven it will be a similar process or if you use something else here you will need to import it as well but okay once it has been imported we can try to map our string builder or let's say if it would be a normal string we would be able to map it as well to the java object however for that you need to create your java object which i already have done here I'm only interested, let's say, in these three fields, string region, which will be, in case of the Italy, let's say Europe, then integer population, which in this case would be this number, and also capital. You can see here that it comes as a list, because in this response, it also comes as a list, not as a string. I guess this is because there are some countries in our world which might have several capital cities at the same time. So that's why I needed to create a list for it as well in order to be able to successfully map it. And after that, yeah, I just created some simple getters and setters. And in the end, I created the two string method, which would allow me to, you know, easily test and print the results to validate that we've been able to successfully convert the string builder to the object. And once it's done, it will be very simple. We can just create our object. However, also one thing to notice is that here we get a list actually. We don't get a single JSON object, but we get the list of JSON objects. And I guess this has been implemented in this way, most probably because potentially there are some edge cases in our world when the two countries have the same name. Otherwise, it doesn't make a lot of sense for me why did the REST countries API implemented it as a list, not as a single object, but you know, this is my only guess. But okay, if it's list, it's list, that's fine. We can, uh, you know, say that we want to map the list of the countries, not a single country, but after that we can just, let's say, get the first country from this list. It's not a problem at all. But yeah, most usually I would expect it to be a normal object a single one not a list but okay probably there's some reasons for that 
All right, we can read the value of our uh, string builder and we want to specify uh, what is the type reference of what we expect. In our case, it will be the list of uh, countries. And basically, let's try to print it, whether we are able to fetch our country. Okay, let's call it country instead of countries, because we actually expect one country. Okay, let's just do something like this and call our custom to string, which we define here. If I run this code, let's see if we've been able to successfully convert our string builder to the object, but we get an exception saying that there's some unrecognized fields. And this is because in our object, we specify that yes, we want to only fetch these three fields, but at the same time, Java will try to map the string builder and it will see that, okay, there's some extra fields which it just cannot map because there are no, uh, there are no fields for it. And in case, if you want to ignore some of the fields and only concentrate on this tree and you don't care about the rest of the fields, you can just use the following annotation. JSON ignore properties and specify that for all the unknowns, you know, you're happy to ignore them. Ignore unknown equal to true. If I rerun it now, you can see that we've been able to successfully convert the, the string builder to the object and we populated this object. If, for example, the country would be different, let's say Spain, yeah, we can see that population has changed, the capital has changed because it's a different country. If it would say would be France, it would change again. Yep, all works as it should. So yep, yeah, that's it. I hope that this tutorial was useful to you. If it was, please give it a like and subscribe. Leave any comments in case if you have any questions. Thank you and see you later.